Hello, Python coders. Well, today's video is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to provide you with a little bit of commentary and, quite frankly, maybe a little bit of ranting and raving about certain things that go on in the development community. And I also want to address a question that I see come up when it comes to just general Python development, not specifically development for PyCute, PySide, but Python development in general, which is what is the best environment? What are the best tools for Python development? The answer to this question generally receives a lot of answers from the community whenever somebody asks. They, there are people that will jump up and down fanatical talking about the particular tool that they use for Python development. And a lot of the times I see them discourage people from using other tools. Now, what set me over the edge was the other night I was watching YouTube videos on Python development. And in one of the suggested videos that came up, it was a developer who was showing off his particular setup for Python development. Nothing wrong with that. And I watched the video because at times I am really interested in what other developers are doing when it comes to their personal setups. Once in a while you might come across a tool that you want to take a look at and maybe experiment with for a while. But then the video took a turn for the worst, as I call it. And this turn was the developer's opinion becoming something that you must do. This irritates me, especially when the developer is somebody who is less than half of my age telling me they're using tool X. We don't even really have to name the tool. But the statement that they made in this video which really threw me off was, well, just use this. Don't, don't, you don't use, you need to use that. You don't need to use that. You don't just, just use this. And I thought that's a, that's an annoying statement because I find development tools to be a lot like clothing. Just because a piece of clothing fits somebody really, really well does not mean that that same piece of clothing is going to fit someone else. Or even if it does fit, they may not like it. And I thought, well, I'm going to make this video and I'm going to point out that there is no one size fits all solution when it comes to Python development or any other development for that matter. So let's take a look at an article that I was looking at just this morning. And this is 10 best Python IDE and Python code editors. Okay, if you're unfamiliar with the term IDE, it's integrated development environment. So in this particular article, which again is a matter of opinion, is going to give you some options to choose from for doing your Python development. The first one it recommends happens to be the one that I use, which is PyCharm. And PyCharm is a pretty sophisticated Python IDE. It has a fan base and it has major critics. And you're going to see that with every single one of the tools that I talk about in this video, all of these have, have a fan base. You could say fanboys or they've got a lot of critics. But, you know, for PyCharm, one of the, the, the 
biggest bang I get out of some of these articles, and I get a laugh, is some of the advantages and disadvantages. So in the advantages for PyCharm, it says active community support, that's true. Lots of useful plugins, true. Um, executes, edits, and debugs Python code without any external requirements, true. Now here's the disadvantage that makes me laugh. Professional version is rather expensive. Now, in a lot of cases, some of these tools have free versions and they have paid for versions. PyCharm is one of those. The free tier or the free version is perfectly fine if you're just getting into Python development. Um, I happen to pay for the professional version because I wanted some of the extra functionality, but professional version is rather expensive. I didn't find it to be very expensive. And every year that you renew, they give you a discount. So, and that, that lasts for the first three years. And then after that, it's a set price. It's cheap to me. So this is a very subjective thing. One, one person's expensive is another person's well, that's really not that bad, really. So I don't understand the reasoning here. Um, so when I look at an article like this, I look at these advantages, disadvantages, but I take everything that I read with a grain of salt. I don't necessarily look at this as being the gospel truth. PyDev. PyDev is actually a plugin to the IDE Eclipse. I use Eclipse in other development work, have for years, so I'm very familiar with Eclipse. And when I first started working with Python, I actually used Eclipse with PyDev. I switched over to PyCharm later, but we'll go over that in a little bit. So PyDev bundled with Eclipse, that's a fairly good option too. IDLE is actually bundled with Python. Uh, pretty user friendly for a beginner. I've never actually used it because I was a developer before I started working with Python. So might be worth a look. Visual Studio Code, this one you're gonna find everywhere. This thing has pretty much become ubiquitous um, across the entire development space. Um, I personally didn't like it. I've tried it a couple of different times. I've never been a fan of it. One thing that in my situation or my opinion, I don't really like things made by Microsoft. So anytime I see Microsoft, I kind of go, I kind of groan. And that's because my IT background goes all the way back to the beginnings of Windows 95. So there are times when I see a Microsoft product and I just kind of go, Ugh. Um, but I have tried this several times. I just didn't like it. Sublime Text, I have never used. Uh, I have seen some people that do a lot of code in Sublime Text, so that might be worth it. Juniper, more scientific from what I understand. Spider, I've never used. Wing uh, and Wing Pro. I actually installed this not that long ago, just to take a look at this. Now, here's another instance where somebody's personal opinion is creeping into one of these articles, which is UI is a little outdated. Okay, here's Wing Pro. And I'm looking at this and I don't know where this is outdated. You have menus, buttons, the toolbar, this big window for editor. Here's your project files, if I had any. What's dated versus PyCharm, which has the project files, my code editing, and because I can, I actually have my MySQL database connection up here uh, or in this window. So is this really dated? 
to me, you're looking at another matter of opinion. One person's dated is another person's just fine. So I, I don't understand where they're coming from. GNU Emacs, I do see a lot of people using GNU Emacs for editing code. I have never used it myself. Um, I guess you can put in the ELPy extension. I'm not a big fan of Vim, VI, Emacs, any of those things, even though I am a Linux user. I don't use Windows unless I absolutely have to. So I wasn't very happy about that. Um, disadvantage is steep learning curve. Well, I have heard that. Uh, that does seem to be fairly ubiquitous. That, But again, it's opinion. Um, one person's steep learning curve is another person's. Yeah, I didn't really have a problem with that. So everyone is different. Uh, Thani, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I have no idea if I am. Uh, Thani is advertised as the Python IDE for beginners. So if you are getting into Python development, well, maybe you want to take a look at this. Um, disadvantages, not for the experienced developer. Well, maybe. Maybe an experienced developer just wants a simple code editor. Might be perfect for them. I have no idea. Lacks advanced features offered by other IDEs. This could be true. Uh, sometimes IDEs are so feature packed that it's difficult to navigate your way through them. Okay. So in a lot of cases, these are very subjective. In fact, extremely subjective. Who knows? Now, again, What's my recommendation? Well, after doing this for 20 plus years, my recommendation would be go out there and look at different tools, experiment with them, find the one that you like working with, and then use that. If a YouTuber or an article tells you, oh, you shouldn't be doing this, you should be doing that, just, just do this, don't listen to them. Throw that out the window and do some experimentation of your own. Uh, I looked at PyCharm simply because I saw a YouTube video and they weren't talking about PyCharm as a tool. They were just using PyCharm to do their Python development. And I thought, you know, I'm going to go take a look at that. Uh, I did. I started out with the community version. And... I bought it, and I've been using it for Python development ever since. Does that mean I think that the tool I was using previous, which was PyDev with Eclipse, is bad? No. I just happen to like this a little bit more, and I like the database support that it has built into it. But I'm not going to belittle you if you went out there and you said, you know, I really like Emacs, or I really liked Visual Studio Code, or I liked Wing Pro, I'm going to give those a try. And I settled on, let's say, Visual Studio Code. I'm not going to call you a buffoon for going out there and picking the, the tool that you like best. So please do some experimentation. YouTubers often are extremely talented people. A lot of them are extremely talented developers, I have no doubt. But I see this dangerous trend where opinion, they list as fact. For instance, can be expensive. Or paid for version is expensive. Well, that's opinion. And again, we have to look at these things and we say, what's the opinion and what's the actual situation? I've run into this many, many times. There are a few things that I would recommend that if you are a new Python developer, and this is one of the reasons why I do generally say give PyCharm a look, is uh, let's see if I can do a 
new project here really quick, which is the use of virtual environments. If you're unfamiliar with virtual environments in Python, I would read an article, watch a video, that type of thing. And what I like is this is all built right into PyCharm for me. So I could use the base interpreter to do to run my Python project, but that's usually not recommended anymore. It's usually recommended to take and make a virtual environment. Um, and one of the big reasons is then you do not have to have all of your Python dependencies all bundled into the main interpreter. So for instance, I could have a Python project where all I'm doing is I'm reading data from a database and I'm exporting that to an Excel spreadsheet. Do I need any of the graphical libraries to do that? No, I don't. I don't need PySide. I don't need PyCute. I don't need WXPython. I don't need Kiwi. I don't need anything except a library that's going to let me write to an Excel spreadsheet. So I, can, I don't have to install that dependency on my base interpreter. I can install that dependency right inside of my project. And for instance, PyCharm lets me manage what packages I have installed right here. So this is all of the packages that I have inside of this Qt demo project. I can see if they're out of date because if they are, if there are new versions available, it will tell me here. And then I can click them and I can update them or upgrade them. I do generally like that functionality. So I do generally tend to stick with PyCharm. So that's my specific development environment. Will it work for you? Maybe. Should you experiment with tools and decide for yourself? Absolutely. Do not let a YouTuber or somebody who wrote an article tell you what tool you should use. The only time I would let somebody get away with that is if I'm doing something extremely specific and I need a very specific piece of software to do that. We're not in that boat in this case. What we're doing is we're writing Python code. We have a whole bunch of different options. So my workflow may not work well for you. Your workflow, even though you're extremely productive, might not be good for me. Okay. So again, go out there, find something for yourself. And if you run across a YouTuber that says you must, yeah, just ignore him. I'm never going to tell you in my videos here that you must do something. I will give you recommendations. I will say, well, generally this is the accepted best practice. I'm not going to tell you how to write your code. That's not my job. My job is to just show you some things. And what you get out of it is what you get out of it. And on that note, I'm going to end our video here for today. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments. And other than that, happy coding.